Welcome to the 29th Massachusetts Multicultural Film Festival. This season's theme, Indigeneities, explores the diversity of indigenous film and media arts being produced today globally. This week's film, Mothney, Towards the Ocean, Towards the Shore, the debut feature film by Sky Hapinka, will be introduced by Jackie Erla. Dr. Erla is professor of anthropology at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. Her research has primarily focused on activism to protect minority languages in Europe, with a special focus on the Basque County of Northern Spain. She is a past scholar in residence of the, of the School of Advanced Research in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and the recipient of fellowships from the National Science Foundation, National Endowment for the Humanities, and the Social Science Research Council. Dr. Erla has been a faculty member at the University of Massachusetts Amherst since 1990 and held various leadership roles as Chair of Anthropology, Director of the Modern European Studies Program, the Interim Director of the Interdepartmental Film Studies Program, and currently directs the Douglas Chair in Bass Cultural Studies. She became Dean of the Graduate School in January 2021. Thank you, Laura. I am really pleased to be participating in this year's festival. It's a festival that's especially meaningful for me because in 1993, just shortly after I had arrived at UMass, with the assistance of a grant from the Getty Foundation, I organized a three-day film and conference series on indigenous film and media. Bringing together films and filmmakers from North America, like Victor Maceisfa, Diane Reyna, Cesar Galindo from Peru, Tracy Moffat and Francis Peters from Australia. That festival was called The Shock of Recognition. And it was the festival that launched the multicultural, uh, Massachusetts Multicultural Film Festival. So I feel really connected to this year's um, theme. And um, I just wanna say a few words um, by way of introduction that back then, so almost 30 years ago, indigenous film and media was an exciting but still a pretty novel concept very poorly funded, difficult to find, and difficult to see the work. And indeed, you could only really see the work by going to film festivals and maybe in a few museums, which is why it felt so important to bring filmmakers to our campus whenever possible to purchase their films for our library collection and to teach them and to make them a part of our curriculum. It's an important part of the larger project of decolonizing the academy. So my congratulations to the Film Studies Program, and in particular to Laura McGough, guest curator, to the funders, and really everyone in Film Studies crew for bringing this exciting series of films and Indigenous filmmakers to our campus, allowing us to see tonight and in the festival overall how Indigenous artists are pushing their creativity, building a fourth cinema on the shoulders of previous generations to tell visually and narratively compelling stories. The theme of survivance, that Native people are not just a part of the past, but right here, right now, was a profound theme of the Shock of Recognition Festival and of this year's festival as well. Back then, documentary as a modality reigned supreme as Native artists and activists sought to tell their truths, recovering their histories and bearing witness. But we also saw early work and more saw some in some of the early work more experimental works like that of Tracy Moffat and her incredibly powerful short film, Night Cries, which you must see if you haven't already, and it's in our collection. We also had films toying with biting parody and humor, like Chris Spotted Eagle's Do Indian Shave, um, or the Aboriginal film Barbecue Area, as well as other really fascinating stories, really breaking the genre outside of documentary. This range of expression I want, to, I want to underscore has always been there and we will see it again in this year's festival where we'll have the opportunity to see how native artists are continuing their journey of telling stories about their worlds, their imaginations and ways of navigating indigeneity. This week's film, Mothney, Towards the Ocean, Towards the Show is as Laura said, the debut feature film of our featured filmmaker this evening, Sky Hopinka. And it's a brilliant example of the experimental mode. Mr. Hopinka of the Ho-Chunk Pechanga Nations was born in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State and received his MFA in film, video, animation, and new genres at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. And he currently teaches not too far away at Bard College in film and electronic arts. 
His work has played at various festivals across the world, including Sundance, Toronto International Film Festival, the Ann Arbor Film Festival, Punto de Vista, and the New York Film Festival, among others. He's been a part of the 2017 Whitney Biennial, and he was guest curator of the 2019 Whitney Biennial. He has a record of achievement that's really impressive that I can't summarize here, but I will just say a few more things. He's been a fellow at the Radcliffe Institute for Advanced Study at Harvard University, at a Sundance Art of Notification Fellow, an Art Matters Fellow, a recipient of the 2020 Alpert Award for Film and Video, as well as the Guggenheim Fellow. And this year he will be co-curating the innovative Flaherty Film Seminar this summer. So Mothney, Towards the Ocean, follows two characters, Sweetwater Psalm and Jordan Mercier, as they wander through nature and the spirit world, contemplating their afterlife, rebirth, and death. It takes an experimental and poetic approach to the myth of death and reincarnation of the Chinookan people in the Pacific Northwest, combining lush visual imagery and captivating sound design to create a portrait of the natural world and its cycles of life and death. Hopinka has described himself as pushing the boundaries of what, quote, traditional storytelling looks like and how we imagine what indigenous cinema can be. The film unfolds mostly in Chinook Wawa, a trade language or lingua franca that evolved in the 1800s and was once spoken all the way from Alaska to Northern California. Language recovery has been an important issue for Mr. Hopinka, who decided to learn the language as his foreign language requirement as an undergraduate found an elder to teach it to him and went on to teach it to others. In Mothney, we, we see his approach to language as a, what he calls a container of culture and a part of building the sensory experience of the film. So I want to leave you with a quote from, from Sky that appeared in Filmmaker Magazine about his approach to filmmaking that I found especially insightful. And as I try to not explain things, I'm hoping that through context, or the things that are nearby, an audience will be able to understand how I feel about them or place themselves in a certain empathetic space where they may not know what's going on, but they know how to feel about it. That's the hope. I mean, of all these things, all of these things are ways that I'm trying to unburden the feeling of having to be a representative for Ho-Chunk people or for Pechanga people. Just different ways to show audiences what I want to show them, and not what they think they want to see. I hope you enjoy the film, and I look forward to our conversation with the filmmaker afterwards. Mm -hmm.